Hi everyone, it's Annalise here, and today I thought I would show you my most used tools for creating mini albums. These are tools that I reach for almost every project, and I just wanted to talk through them in case you're new to making mini albums, just so you can get familiar with the kinds of tools that you might need to make projects. So I'll talk through what I have and what I use and um, how I use them. So first of all, every crafter needs at least one or two good pairs of scissors. I have the Tim Holtz tonic scissors. These are serrated edges pretty much and they're really sharp. So this is great for detail or if I'm cutting something kind of thick. Um, so these are great for cutting paper and I, I also use them for cutting some ribbons. I know some people have separate scissors for anything fabric but I just tend to reach for these the most because they're good for a lot of purposes. And then I also have some little um, little scissors here too that are great for fussy cutting some images as well. So those are my two most used pairs of scissors for just general use. And then this is my paper trimmer. I use the cutter pillar and I really love it. It's like a guillotine, not a guillotine, but like a rolling, a rolling style paper cutter. So I love it because it's really strong and it can go through some thicker, even some chipboard, not like the, the really thick one, but like maybe more like a cereal box. It can manage to cut through that and just really easy to line it up and just roll it and make a cut here. So this side has like a metal ruler. You can see that mine has started to fade. So I ended up adding some more tape that's like a ruler tape just so it's easier to see where I am if I'm further down on the paper trimmer so if I were to do it over again maybe I would get the one that has the etched grid so that way it doesn't fade like this one but you know this has been a really good workhorse for me and I've used it a lot so no regrets there it does have a light switch that lights up the LED lights here, so um, you can even see through, not that you can from this angle, but the idea is that you can see through some of your thinner papers or maybe white paper. You can see a little shadow and see exactly where you're cutting. So this is my go-to paper trimmer. Um, I used to use, I used to use this Fiskars one all the time when I was doing a lot of card making a couple years ago. Um, and this is nice because it does swing out so you can get, you know, all the way up to like even 14, 15 inches, um, which is more than this. This just goes to 13, but, um, you know, you always have to replace the blades and this is really good if I'm going to travel and craft, like I would definitely bring this cause this is like heavy, but, um, I find that this one is just nice because I've never had to change the blade and it just cuts really smoothly. So that's just what I've been using, especially because I'm doing a lot more heavy duty crafting versus several years ago. All right, and then one more thing for cutting, a couple more things, is um, I do like to use a box cutter when I'm cutting heavier chipboard. So I'll use a box cutter and a ruler and use a cutting surface. So um, for thicker, chipboards. I use a just regular old box cutter. Um, sometimes I also like to use an X-Acto blade for maybe something thinner or for paper. Um, I really like these by Pen Blade. They have this little lever that brings the blade out and then you press this part and it retracts. Um, I really like this because sometimes it's easy to misplace the lids on X-Acto blades and you don't want to leave a blade exposed, of course. So this one is also retractable. You have to push it and push it up, push it in and up so the blade will show and then um, retract it. So I prefer that style just because I know I'm not accidentally going to leave my blade open and leave it for me to get hurt or someone else to get hurt. And then, of course, you want to cut on a cutting surface. Um, you can see this mat has been well loved. It's a little dirty, but you know what? That's what happens when you're making crafts is it gets a little dirty. So this is from American Crafts and it is reversible. It has another side that is a little, that's some scrap paper. It does have another side that has white lines instead of black lines. 
If I was really smart, maybe I would have kept this side really clean for videos, but you know what? <laughs> I have supplies that I'm going to use them and they're going to get a little messy. So I think that's totally okay. I've thought about buying a new nice mat just to have as a background, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> maybe one day I will, just because I really love this color. All right, so to go with your cutting blades, you want to have a good ruler. So I had seen all sorts of crafters use the Tim Holtz ruler. Um, there's also a Lawn Fawn ruler that's a really similar idea to this. And finally, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to buy it and try it out. And I'm really glad I did. It's really useful because it has a metal edge. So that's really helpful for when you're cutting. And then it also has an extended grid. So you can see it has like a full inch and then also has a half an inch. So that way you can line it up, line it up with your paper and maybe I want to cut some strips. And sometimes it's hard to cut strips on your paper cutter because maybe you didn't line it up perfectly and it's a little crooked. So a great way is to use this and maybe I want a half an inch, line up the half inch with my edge of the paper and then I can easily just cut perfect half inch strips every time. This is kind of a thicker paper, so I might do a couple passes to make sure I got it. Yeah. So then I just have a little strip of paper and I know it's not gonna be crooked because it will be exactly half an inch. So that's really helpful. And then it also has another side that's a little beveled, a little curved as well. So I love using this ruler just to measure things, of course, because you can easily see quarter inches and eighth inches. So super helpful for me. I use it all the time to measure what I, while I'm working. And so that way I know what size mat I want to make for a page, for example. So definitely use these all the time. Also for rulers, I do like to use a T roll ruler from time to time. It's just really nice to have that T at the top to make sure that you're really going straight and you're having a, a right angle and that everything's squared up really nicely. So a T ruler is also really helpful to have. I didn't really get it until more recently, but I do pull it out from time to time. All right, while we're talking about cutting, I think I'll also show this really fun tool. So this um, I got from my local stamp store, Runaway Art and Craft Studio in Salem. Awesome store, love it. And so I got this there and it's called the perfecttrimruler.com. Well, that's their website, but Perfect Trim Ruler. And what this does, is when you're making an album and you have, we'll say you have your, say this is the chipboard and you've just wrapped it in your cardstock and you're gonna fold in your papers to make the corners. And you always have this little extra square that you don't really need. So what you would do is consider how thick your chipboard is. If it's really thin, use this thin one. If it's super thick, they have this one. Usually I use this thickness of chipboard, so this works well for me. So what you would do is line it up with the corner of your chipboard, and then you would just trim this corner off. And then you've removed that little excess triangle that you didn't need, and you can just fold your paper so you can wrap your book. So if this white paper was your chipboard and this purple or blue was your was your paper for wrapping the book, then you've eliminated all that extra paper. All you have to do is like fold one side, tuck this in a little bit because there's like a little tiny excess to make sure you've wrapped your corner completely. And then you have a perfect corner every time. So I'd like to show this in a tutorial sometime but I just wanted to show you really quick in a rough way how you would use a ruler like this. Um, it's been really handy. I've been using it for the last couple years and I really love having it on hand, knowing I'm always gonna have a perfect amount of paper to wrap the corner. So 
So the next thing I'm going to talk about is scoring. When you're doing mini albums, you have to score all the time for hinges or for pockets, for pages, and I have two scoreboards. These are the two that I use all the time. This is the Martha Stewart scoreboard, and it also comes with this piece which I don't use as often, but it could come in handy for making envelopes. So it's just an extra piece that you put in the corner and you would use your paper to line up here so you could have an angled spot, an angled score. So this is the 45 degree angle and it's really helpful as you can see if you're making an envelope. Um, so that's if I wanted to do envelopes. Usually I don't need it. It just stays back here. There we go. Um, but this is a great scoreboard. It goes all the way up to 12 and a half on both sides. And it does also have this little container to keep a bone folder. So I just always have the one it came with in here in case I'm traveling and maybe I forgot my bone folder. I'll know I'll have a backup. And I love the scoreboard because it has a score for every, um, for every eighth inch. So some scoreboards, they kind of decide what the most used score lines are and only have those lines on the board. And I find that a little frustrating because if I'm doing a custom project, maybe I do need something that's a little more random, like seven and an eighth, you know, instead of like the most common, like four, four and a quarter, five, five and a half. Um, I like just being able to have any possibility at my fingertips. So that's why I really love this style of scoreboard where it has all the lines. If I'm doing a smaller project or just a smaller piece and I, I want to have more room on my desk, then I reach for this smaller one. So this one is from We Are Memory Keepers and it does have some suggested sizes, like really commonly used sizes. So that's helpful if you're trying to remember. Um, it looks like there's like a little diagonal for making envelopes on this. I don't, I don't usually use the side, but I guess I should take another look at it and consider how I could use it. I just don't often make a lot of my own envelopes, or if I do, I use my envelope punch board. But anyway, this one, it also came with a little score, a little scoring tool that I removed but it would just hook in here and it goes from five and a half to seven on this side. So it's a nice size. It does have centimeters on this side if you're more, if you're using centimeters more often, but this is great if I'm doing like an A2 card because I can score at four and a quarter or five and a half and know that my paper is going to fit. And then of course you got to have a good bone folder. This is just a typical, bone folder. I use it all the time when I'm using the scoreboards or just pressing paper down that I've adhered to make sure it's um, glued down really well. So really helpful to have a nice bone folder as well. So next I'll talk a bit about adhesives. These are the adhesives that I reach for the most because I'm doing a lot of bigger projects. I like to use the Scotch Advanced Tape Glider. And this is a big mama tape gun. <laughs> so it does open up so that way you can add your refills. And it does have instructions on how to do it. Um, I've done it enough times I totally have it memorized. But if it's something you do every once in a while, you might be like, how do I do this again? <laughs> but not too hard, not too bad. Easy to buy the refills. And it's great because it has a lot of adhesive. It lasts me... For a project kind of depending on the size if I'm doing a really big project I might break out another pack but it's just nice to have a nice big tape runner to use for a daily project so this I would use if I'm attaching paper to paper and that's usually for most things so another thing that's helpful if you need something stronger is to use some score tape. So score tape has one side is adhesive and the other side has the release paper. So it can be on the roll. 
And I like to use this when I'm doing the actual construction of my book, where it's important for it to be really strong and really durable. So I would use this for attaching my cover paper to my cover, for making hinges, for making, like attaching things to the spine of a book. So it's really good to have um, basically for the body of the book, I use this, but for decorative papers that I'm laying on top, I use this tape glider instead. So really good to have both options. And another glue that's great to have on hand is just a liquid glue. I really love the PVA glue. Um, I've used this for other book binding projects. So it's acid neutral. This tape is also acid neutral. This one should be as well. So it's not going to uh, mess up your paper over time, but it's just nice to have a liquid glue to cover maybe areas that have more surface area. Like I might use this, a thin layer of this, or, you know, a small little squiggle design for when I'm adding my cover to my, my cover of my album. So the wrapping it with a chipboard. So it's good to cover a lot of area. And I also like to use it when I'm attaching certain embellishments. Like if I have to attach ribbon, I like to add a dot of this glue for that. If I, if I want to reinforce a sticker or a chipboard that I have, and I want to make sure it's really going to stick on, even if it has adhesive on the back, if I want it to be really strong, I just add a little bit of liquid glue to it as well. So definitely recommend having some liquid glue on hand as well as some dry adhesive. And you can also get smaller bottles so it's easier to work with. All right, and then just another fun little extra for attaching is I do like the Tim Holtz at mini attacher. This is just like a little tiny stapler. So let's just get an example here. Um, I love to use this when I'm using embellishment. So maybe I've made like a little flag and I just wanna have a little staple. Like look how cute and little it is. Just cute. So I love doing this when I'm doing embellishments. Um, and you can see on the grid, it's like about a quarter of an inch, whereas like a regular stapler staple would probably be closer to half an inch. So just really cute and little, just a little extra bonus. And then I would say the last of my most commonly used tools is a hole punch and a corner rounder. So these are both from We Are Memory Keepers. This is the hole punch and it also has the grommet um, attacher. So this is if I had a an eyelet and it's customizable. If you have like a, a quarter inch or an eighth inch eyelet, you can customize this side to the correct one and crunch your eyelet closed. So that's really helpful. You don't need, um, I had one that was just a quarter of an inch grommet cruncher. I don't know what it's called, but I used to have one of those and then I didn't need it anymore because I got this tool and it does quarter inch. So it's nice because it uses different sizes. So that's what this part here does. Um, on the sides, they are hole punches and I use these all the time. So this is an eighth of an inch and this is the quarter of an inch. So what you would do is put your paper in between here and then you just squeeze the lever as normal and it cuts your hole. And what I love about this versus a regular hole punch is that it can cut through some strong materials. So look at that blade here. It can cut through chipboard really easily. So I use this if I want to cut a hole in chipboard, maybe I want an eyelet on my cover and my cover is made of chipboard. So I can easily cut through the hole and then put the eyelet in and make the eyelet stay in. So it's really nice to have both sizes available. And it also has this little ruler. So if I want it to go more shallow from the edge, maybe I just want it a quarter inch. Just squeeze that little lever and instead of half an inch where it was before, it will just do a quarter of an inch in. 
So really helpful. And then for storage, you can squeeze it closed and press the lock and it takes up a little bit less space that way. Um, the other thing I love to use is just a regular corner rounder. This is also a two in one. So it has a quarter of an inch corner, which is just a little smaller. If you just want it slightly rounded. And then it has the half inch side, which you can see has a larger, smoother, more circular edge. So if you like a more square look, this is good. If you want a more rounded look, then the half inch is great. Um, you can see that has my little extras falling out, but it does have a little thing that keeps your pieces inside. So when you're chomping your corners, it doesn't go everywhere, kind of did today, but it keeps them in place so that way they're not flying everywhere and keeps your workspace a little clean. And then these do fold close for storage. Um, if you want to get fancy, I do have another one that I love to use. This is the stub. It's like a little ticket stub. And then on this side, it's a scallop. So it's nice to have some options if you want to do some little decorative corners. So this one I would say is more optional, but um, just a regular corner rounder is great. They also make these like punches. Those work great too. But I do, again, love the We Are Memory Keepers ones because they can cut through chipboard. So if you have a chipboard cover and you want to have a rounded edge, it's easy to do because this is strong enough to cut through chipboard. Whereas a, a regular corner punch is only going to work for regular paper. Sometimes it's even harder on some thicker cardstock. So this is perfect, really heavy duty. Well, there you go. Those are my most used tools for paper crafting, especially for making books. I hope that this video was helpful for you as you're um, deciding what kind of tools work best for you and um, what kind of tools you might need if you were going to start making mini albums. Thanks so much for spending time today and I hope you have a great day.